Hi, George here. And today we're going to be making this pop-out photograph right here. This is based on a project I did over for Adobe's Photoshop Elements program. And it's very similar, but there are some definite differences here between working in Affinity Photo and working in Photoshop Elements, especially when we're getting into working with layer masks, several differences in there. We'll cover all that in this project. If you want this picture that I'm using in here, I put a link for that in the description. Go ahead and download that right from the description. And make sure you check out my complete course for Affinity Photo. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description as well. Okay, let's just first open up the original image. And I have it here in my recent list. And it's right here, it's just this picture. Now notice in here, I have her moved in her position. We'll take care of that a little later on in the project. I just kind of align her better. But to start off with, we're just like this. And the first thing, and I always do this in all my projects, is just to make a copy of the background. Over here where it says background, right click and duplicate. And here we go, there's our copy. We'll be working on that copy. We'll hide this one. And that's just a safety, just in case things go wrong. You can always go back to your original right down here. Even when I don't think I'll be doing anything that's going to be damaging the photo, I still go ahead and do that one step. Okay, our next step is we need to come in here and make a mask to remove her from the background. This time around, let's use a lasso tool for this. I try to do different tools each one of these videos just for some variety in here so you can see all the different tools being used. So go over here to the rectangular marquee tool, hold your mouse button down, and come down here, you'll find freehand selection tool. That's the one you want. And then up here where the options are, let's set this for freehand. There we go. And I'm just going to make a selection just right around fairly close into the figure, but not exactly on the figure. If you happen to go over the figure a little bit, that's going to be okay. But just fairly close in here. Now, as I'm doing this, you may see that this fairly smooth. I'm going a little bit slower than I normally would here just for this video so you can see what I'm doing. Fairly smooth. And the reason for that is that I have a wrist rest on my mouse. And that lets me kind of rest my hand. And then I move this with just my fingers, not moving my hand. It makes it much easier for this kind of a process in here. Much easier really for anything when you're working with graphics or imagery is to have a wrist rest for your mouse. Okay, let's just go around here and we'll get around this arm and back over to the beginning again. Again, as you can see, I'm in fairly close, but I'm not trying to be right against that edge or anything. We'll be taking care of that with a second technique in here. Around here, put on that flower in her hair right there. There we go. And back to the beginning, go right on top of the beginning and let go. And that makes your selection. Now that we have our selection, we can come in and refine the selection. That's the refine tool right here. Let this load up and you can adjust your size right down here. Right now we're at 50 pixels. And that's not a bad size, but I think I'll come down just a little bit on that. 32, that's a better size. You also can go up or down in size with the left and right square brackets. Left goes down, right goes up. And with this tool, just come in here and paint right over that edge like that. And then Affinity Photo goes in, re-examines that edge, and tries to do a much better job for you. So it does all the hard work for you. Now, you may have a few things that might need a little bit of retouching. We'll see when we get down there. On the hair, just brush in from the outside. And this should do a real nice job. This is one of the things I like about Affinity Photo. It's very good at selecting hair. In my opinion, this is the best program for that. I think this does a much better job than Photoshop Elements. It also does a better job than Adobe's Photoshop program. So it's really a great program for getting all the hair. Let's come around and get that flower right here. We'll get the rest of this done. And we'll go around the whole figure like this, just a little piece at a time, and let Affinity Photo go in, think about it for a second, and then make that selection for us. And just kind of work in here. Now, sometimes, again, it may need some cleanup afterwards, but Affinity Photo is usually pretty good at not needing very much in the way of cleanup. And worked on the back side here. As you can see, I'm not being really accurate with this. As long as I have that overlap happening, this should be okay. Now, sometimes it may not want to come in and do a section like that. A good trick here is just to make your brush size smaller and then try it again. That does seem to help sometimes. Here we go, up a little bit on that. So if there's a tight in area, just go for a smaller brush size and that should be okay. 
And again, we'll come back and do some cleanup on this. Now the bottom part down here really doesn't actually matter since only about the top half of her is going to be popping out. So this is going to be on the same photograph anyway and won't really show. But if we're doing it, we might as well do the whole mask correctly. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll finish up around this side here. We'll come back and take a look at those spots that didn't quite get exactly right. And up into here and that little bit right there. Okay, that's all looking very good. It's a bit right in here. Let me try that just again. Okay, that took care of that. So we can get this in here. Sometimes depending upon the values in your image, the colors in your image, it may not be able to get a spot like right in there. I think we finally got it. Okay, there we go. It's beginning to catch it. As you can see, I'm going over it again and Affinity Photo seems to be spotting it the next time through. So don't give up on it on your first try. Okay, that looks really good. I see just a little bit of an edge along up here. You can help that by bringing your ramp down a little bit. And that can usually help it that just kind of clean that up. Basically, if you move the ramp this way, it moves the selection further into your subject. If you move the ramp this way, it moves the selection further out from your subject. You see that if I go way up here, so let's move that way out. If I come down here, it pulls it way in. So a little bit to the left will usually help clean up those little edges. Okay, I think we have a good mask now. So with this, let's come down here and let's set this to output new layer with mask, choose apply. There we go, there's our new layer that looks great. You can see it up here, just the girl on that layer. Here's our layer mask, and then here's that background image. It automatically hid that background. I can show that again, so there's the background. Okay, now let's hide this top layer. That's our subject layer. Let's come down to our duplicated background layer, and I'll back up just a little bit. I'll just use the control zero keyboard shortcut to recenter and fit that in. Let's now make a shape in here for our image to be popping out of. And for that, we'll go over here to our tools again. We're on the freehand selection tool still. Let's go up here to type and change that to polygonal. And I'll come right over here someplace and click and pull over here somewhere, maybe like that, and click and come down here a little ways and a click and then down over here. So I'm just basically drawing in that page. Come back on top of the starting point and click. And there's our selection. And this will be the picture that she's jumping out of. If you want to, you can grab that and actually move your selection around at this point. We'll go over just a little bit. I want to have some of that shadow showing down here. That helps to sell the trick. Okay, that's a pretty good position. Let's now just save this. We'll need this again for a later step. Go up here to select. Come down to save selection. I'm going to save it as a spare channel. If you save to a file, you can actually then save it out and add it to a different file if you want to. But a spare channel is okay. And we have channels right over here. That's what we're working in the RGB right now. And then down here, here's the spare channel. Here's a pixel selection. That's that selection in here. Here's the spare channel, and that is that same selection. So that's what we're working with. Okay, layers. We're on our background layer. I now want to convert this into a layer mask. So come down here, click on the layer mask right there, layer mask button. It cuts it out as a layer mask. Control D to deselect. If I then bring back up my other layer here and show that, there we go. So here's our image we're jumping out of. And it's very important to not move your layers around. If I go up here to this one and I move the layer, you can see I see her. I'll do Control Z to back out of that. So make sure you keep those kind of locked together. Okay, now we need a different background in behind here. We'll do that next. This layer has this layer mask being applied to it. I want to get this one linked into this one like we have up here. So click on the layer mask side, right click and mask to below, and then merges the layer mask onto that layer. So that's now locked in good. Okay, let's come down here to the background layer and hit the add pixel layer button that's just to the left of the trash can there. There's a new pixel layer. We're gonna put a gradient on this layer. Go right here to our tools, and the gradient tool is right here, right below that paint bucket. There we go. And in here, you can just click and drag, and it will create a gradient for you. It uses your foreground and background colors. It's normally going to be a white to black. Now, once you're here, you can actually grab these and move your gradient around to position it anywhere that you want. Now, I have this set up here on a linear gradient. That's our type right here, linear. That's correct. These aren't the colors I want. So, if I'm onto this one point here, I can go up here to my colors, and I can actually choose a different color right up in here. Okay, it's kind of a dark muted blue, so I think right in here looks pretty good. 
And I can even tweak that if I want to a little bit here with these slider controls. And I'll go with that one. So here's kind of a nice dark blue. And I can still grab this and move things around to get just the effect that I want. I think I'll pull it clear to the bottom. So it's kind of a nice subtle gradient in there. And I'll pull this top one up a bit further like that. So I'm not going pure white at the top. And I think that looks pretty good. There's our gradient. And if I go to a different tool, you no longer see those lines in there. Okay, now we're still on the same pixel layer. Let's bring back up our saved selection. Let's go over here to our channels. Come down to the spare channel right here. There's our spare channel. I'm going to grab the magic wand tool right over here. And just click into that. That makes a selection right here. Okay, back over to our layers again. On our pixel layer, let's make a new layer right here. New pixel layer. There we go. I have the white in the front right now, so here's our white color is selected. Go up to the flood fill tool or paint bucket tool, click into that section, and it fills that with white. I'll do control D to deselect that. And we have our control handles up here. So now let's just grab these control handles and I'll pull these up a little bit. And let's just stretch that out just a touch. It doesn't have a nice border that I want, so you can get your border just the way you want. If you want more of a Polaroid look, just give yourself more space at the bottom. It gives a good Polaroid. You have to kind of work around to get it just the way you want, but that gives you nice squared off corners. Do control zero to fit screen again. There we go. Now at this point with the whole background gone, I think she's a bit too much to the left-hand side here. So I'm going to click on the top layer here, hold my shift key down, come down, click on that pixel layer right here, the one that has that white shape on it. So those three are selected. I'll then drag her over here. They're just a bit off center on the right hand. So I think that works out better for the composition. Her head is now basically centered and everything else is looking pretty good. Click outside to deselect those. Last thing we need is to have a drop shadow in here. So let's go down to this layer here. That's our white border layer. Come down where it says FX, click on that. This brings up our layer effects. And come down here to outer shadow and click on that one. And here we want to bring our offset up and go quite a ways up. You see it, there it is. You have to go a long ways before you begin to see that. And there's the offset, you can see that shadow in there. You can adjust the angle here to get the best look. Maybe I'll try the direction 280. And we'll try 330. There we go. That's a pretty good direction in here. So you adjust your space out here with the offset like that. And the radius is going to soften the edge. See right there, there's softened edge. So here's our radius. The opacity is how solid it is. And around somewhere in the middle is pretty good for your opacity. So you can come in here and adjust your sliders and get these exactly right. Also, this is blending in with our background there. That's the blend mode multiply. You can use different blend modes if you want. But let's go for normal on that one. And close, there we go, click outside. And it'll click off to the other left-hand side over there. Fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do. You can vary this if you want to. You don't have to use a gradient in here. You can use a photograph back there. I did a gradient just for one more thing to show you here in this video. But you can use graphic art back in here or a stock Photoshop, whatever you like, that's fine. The real trick is making your initial selection and making your layer mask. And then the second layer gives you your image in behind. I could even change this to something else, a whole different photograph behind her if you wanted to. So a lot of flexibility in here once you have your original image. One tip which helps a lot on this is to try to find somebody that looks like they are actually jumping or running or some kind of action pose. Those work better for this pop out effect. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to use Affinity Photo, I have a complete training course for this. This is Affinity Photo 2 right now. And the link for that is at the top of the description. And I cover everything inside of Affinity Photo, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels on the right-hand side, all the different personas, everything. And it really is the best way to learn how to use this great photo program. Make sure you hit that thumbs up to leave a like for the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that as well. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. I'm doing new videos all the time. And I'll see you next time.